G'day, g'day, g'day. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, or welcome back, I should say, both to myself and to everyone. Um, it's been a little while since I've uh, done any live streams. Um, had a couple weeks off now, I think it is, just with some holidays and family time and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but we're back, at least for the next little bit. So welcome to everyone. Welcome to another set of Alliance War hits. Um, this time around, we've got the Pirate Horde facing up against I Mercenary. Um, interestingly, it's the same alliance that we, or well, I faced in the last live stream I did, <laughs> so shows how long it's been, um, since we last did one. So, yeah, um, obviously we've got the war ongoing, just clicked into second half of war about an hour ago, so we've got all six flags to use. We do have a bit of a points advantage at the moment, but we have used a lot more flags than them. Um, I think they've used barely any, I think they've used, yeah, less than 30 flags so far, um, of their 180. Uh, we, on the other hand, have used about 70 um, or 65, so a um, little bit further along on our side of things than on theirs. Um, so, yeah, plenty of flags left to go, so very hard to tell where any of this is going. Uh, Battlefield-wise, it is uh, 30 on 30. Uh, both sides are using yellow tanks. I Mercenary have jumped on the bandwagon with um, that regard. Um, so I think now that all of the top teams have now copied us and are now using the yellow tanks as well. Um, so, yeah, nice to know that everyone is finally catching up with us uh, in that regards. Um, but, yeah, so they've jumped onto yellows as well. They were running purples last time we saw them, but I think they just experiment a little bit with this, that, and the other, trying out different things. Um, yeah, that's... Um, I guess all there is to really say about that. So we're going to jump in and start some of the attacks. There are only a couple double reviving teams, one of them being Livetan there. Um, and there's one other one I found, Enpole over here. I don't believe there are any other double revivers. So they're going to be our first two teams that we go for. And then after that, we'll just see where we go. Um, but yeah, yellow tanks um, makes it a little more interesting. Um, I will just quickly chuck this into chat while I'm thinking about it. Uh, give me two seconds. All right, just typing that so that it pops up onto the stream banner so that um, it's there for anyone joining us along the way. But as I said, if anyone's got any questions, do sing out because it is the easiest and quickest way of uh, getting an answer from me. Um, <laughs> so feel free to do so. So welcome Draco um, and everyone else that is on board with the stream. So we're going to start with Liv Livetan. Um, so we'll do that one. Um, how do we want to do this? Uh, I am going to use three purples for most of my attack teams um, just because yellow tank. So it makes it a little bit easier with regards to strong colors. Um, so we're going to go with unicorn for one of them. Um, 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 might go double night owl. Then we might use a Ksenia and then actually we might use a bigger Ksenia than that. That one and then accent, I guess. Um, so we'll go fruit guns on the two reds, uh, speed guns on the two night owls, just to get them charging a bit quicker and the lance head on unicorn. So let's see how this goes. Maybe I should take Rudolph instead of accent or even Brock. I might go Brock just cause of, um, that tank there. Um, so if... We quickly check on the tank. Uh, the main one that I'm worried about is the counter attack. That can be a little bit dangerous. So we'll bring Brock just to be able to dispel that. So let's go with the first fight. Good luck <laughs> to myself. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Not a massively unfriendly board. So we'll make the green match, which will just cascade in the purples. And then we can pick up our red tiles. Um, and then we've kind of run out of stuff that's immediately 
matchable. I'm probably going to make this yellow match to bring that purple tile up into a matchable position. So let's do that. Um, and then we'll just take the purples. Um, we are a little bit stuck. Might go that way just to get the red match. Um, mm -mm. All right, we'll go a cascade and hopefully get a match. No match. Excellent. That is fantastic. Mm. This board is not being very helpful at all. I'm just not getting tile cascades, um, which definitely makes it difficult. And when we do get tile cascades, they're onto heroes with counter attack. Love it. Um. Well, I guess we'll just keep feeding tiles because we're not getting anywhere. I really am in trouble now. Dead, dead, almost dead, dead, dead. <laughs> oh, dearie me. What a start. What a start. Oh, man. All right. Let's just clean that out of the way just because we may as well. We're not going to get much. Oh. We will get better tiles, but it's more just doing a little bit of service for the rest of the ally. Um, we might chuck Doodle in for some healing and then Lepus. Um, we'll go those two there. All right. Hopefully get a couple better tiles this time around because that first one was decidedly unpleasant. And this looks like it's wanting to go exactly the same route because there's not a lot going. What is with this boards and not cascading anything? My goodness. It's like one-off matches. Everything is just one match at a time. One match. There's a little cascade. Far out. Boards are really deciding to be nice. Like, what is this? No cascades at all, anywhere, basically. All right. Fortunately, it is a clean, and that was meant to fire as well, which is going to be possibly problematic. All right. Oh my goodness. Hopefully the rest of the boards aren't this bad because this could be a very, very long fight, <laughs> long war if they're all going to be like this. I think the biggest cascade I got in that was a 4X, which is tiny. Like usually I've got something that's at least double figures once in a fight. Um, even if it's poorly timed, it's usually there at least. All right, let's reset. We're going to go with end pole next. So we are going to use ram horn and we might throw in growl. And then we need someone that's a little bit heavier damage. So let's go with quattro. Um, this time we might go with accent and we'll chuck in possibly Jocosta. No, we want the surety. We're going to go with Ksenia and we'll use Joe in the next attack. So. Uh, dodge gun on Grohl and speed guns on my other two fine friends. And hopefully we get a little bit nicer with regards to the board flow. Because I don't know if I can do four more fights with one off matches. <laughs> All right. We haven't got anything nice to start with. We've got this match, which I'm going to take the yellow and blue. Little cascade in there, so maybe possibly a little bit better. Perfectly positioned red match. There we go, we got a 6x, so that's something. 
grab the purple tile just to drag one straight up the middle. And then I will just do that to get the red match onto Mare. That was a big red match rather than a small one I was expecting. Hopefully we can pick off... Nope, not quite. We should get him with this um, purple match three. We'll go that. I'm going to hold Ramhorn just to see if either of these two do any reviving, but I don't think they're going to get there because we should be able to just finish them off now with that red match. There we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there we go. We got two fights done and dusted. Um, or two, two teams done and dusted, uh, three fights to manage it. Um, and from this point, we're pretty much just going to pick up, uh, single reviving teams that have nasty ish looking defenses. Um, so one that springs out is probably Savdug, Savdug up here. Um, we might grab Frank down the bottom here. Um, and then maybe Devilman77 or possibly Napster as the last one. So we'll start off with uh, Savdog. I'm just calling it Savdog. I don't know if that's the actual name. Um, so we'll go Talon, Sato, and mm -mm, we're going to have to use Bunny Hop because it's just because of that team combo. Um, I said Joe next, so we will use Joe, and we might use Scarlet. What are we facing? We might actually change that, and we might use Sunbeam instead. All right. Uh, speed here, speed there, and accuracy there. All right. All right, let's go. We'll talk about my defense there because you might have noticed it is a little bit different to what I've been running um, in previous wars. Just trying out something different in the war sphere and see how it turns out. Nice little purple match here, which we can get, which should kill the tank. Excellent. Always easy with the tank down or easier rather. Um, and now I just need a way to turn because I haven't got any purple uh, poison up. So a little bit pointless using... Uh, bunny hop yet. Um, I want to save that purple match. We might do it that way. Now we've got uh, poison ailment out on everyone, so we'll drop it there, I suppose. Hopefully get some nice piles back in somewhat, kind of, ish. Hold sunbeam for a turn just to wait to see who gets buff so we do have a lot of buff so we can actually do it now so we'll go sunbeam and see just one shot a shame and uh, that should finish Ksenia off and then we can plot away with the rest of our tiles nothing off a green grenade that moved nine ish tiles we got absolutely no cascade all right walker can have match three we'll just use joe in a turn just to get all of those healings done. I actually thought that was a purple tile there, which is why I made that move. It's otherwise I should have done something different. All right. See if we can get a double shot. There we go. Bang, bang. Excellent. Both of them now have a defense down ailment, which is great. And now we should hopefully get some tiles in. It's a little hard when I'm not getting purples to make a match off. All right. We're just going to recharge everyone, it seems. Oh, man. Anything? Nothing? What is fortressly slow? Red match. Do the green match, so then we finally will get a purple match and be able to finish this fight. Bonk. And bonk. nope, don't need bunny hop. Can finish it with Sato. There we go. Two done. Or three kills rather. Three from four shots. Yeah, three from four. Alright, we'll grab Frank next. Um 
We've got one, two, three, and we've also still got both of. Mm -mm. We might be one short. We might have to use Demonica. We've still got both Coyotes. But this will be a slightly weaker team than what is ideal. A little bit weaker than usual, but we shall make it work. Probably one maxed five star or a second, third coyote off being able to run three teams or sorry, all six teams, five teams. No, we are five teams only because I didn't use any purples on that clean. I have less purples available than I thought I did for a second there. Don't know why. Seeing as I used similar setups in the last war anyway. Oh, well, let's go. So we'll do that. We'll get some purple matches in. We'll grab the purple grenade there. Get everyone charged up. We'll use Demonica just because she's now going to get the armor or healing for herself rather. I'm going to hold... No, we're not. We're going to use Krampus actually. We'll do that just to inflict some damage. And knowing that I can recharge pretty much everyone with that grenade. Grab the red tiles. Pop this blue grenade next because that'll give me a match for red. Um, I don't actually need a match for red though. So I might hold that a turn until we've gotten uh, Bunraku. Sorry, Bunraku. Bunraku. Fired at least one time, which we've now done. I should have done Coyote first to cleanse that, but that's all right. Now uh, B has got extra speed, so she will charge very quickly in the next time. So now with the setup that I've got on B, she now only needs six tiles to charge. So you can see I've carefully held a ghosted match three up the middle. Um, and that is for literally that reason to be able to get that ghosted match three. We'll kill off the ones on the right. Grab that ghosted match three to recharge B instantly, as you can see there. She is on a third charge now, so we are getting a lot of uh, speed out of her mana, or a charge rather. Um, interestingly, she is now the fastest hero in the game, just like that. Um, so one turn of Ksenia grants her 27% charge. Just let that sink in for a second. 27% charge. So four turns. Um, which admittedly she only gives three turns of, of um, passive charge, will completely charge Bunraku's mana or special skill again, which is utterly broken. And on top of that, she does fairly hefty damage as well. So, bonk, bonk, and bonk. And you can see just how many status effects she has and dealing 400 damage. <laughs> it's actually a bit silly. <laughs> And when I say a bit silly, I mean really silly. So that's all right, because this is perfectly balanced and everything is normal and fine. Oh man, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, Devil Man, we've got a double yellow team as well as having that flank in um, uh, Barbie. So we are going to go with Whipstar and Dark Skull combo again. Of course, we need to chuck in an 8-bit. Um, just for 8-bit and Whipsters synergy. Um, we've got Marigold left over. And then, of course, our final El Coyote as well. When I track him down, there he is. Um, we'll go the Dodge Gun here. Speed Guns on both of them because Marigold isn't fast enough as it is. We go Speed Dodge on them. The reason I'm going so heavy with the Dodge on the yellows rather than the normal crit guns I use is because I do only have the one healer, which is El Coyote. Um, and there is a lot of AOE effect on that to defense team. All right, last one. Let's go. Fingers crossed. Not quite as nice as the last couple boards have been. Um, choice between probably this yellow red match three um, or match six or this red, this green blue one up here. So the green blue will put the three purples onto um, Clara there. 
It'll also make this red match up to there and it'll push that yellow tile up one. So I do have the yellow match in the next turn. This has the benefit of possibly, maybe possibly giving me a match four, which I'm going to take because I like a gamble, which we didn't get, but it's okay because it has paid off with a purple grenade there instead. So we will quickly grab the grenade and hopefully not get, we did get whacked where I didn't want to get hit. Um, not the cleanest move of that there, but it does give me this yellow match, which is what I'm after. Um, we're not looking too crash hot at the moment, to be honest. That's a little bit lucky. Got to be like 99% charge on that one. All right, we are in a bit of bother now though because we don't have much health left on anyone, which is irritating. So close. And that ends that fight because, yeah, we didn't quite get there. Um, not the best performance, <laughs> as is obviously self-evident. Um, there we go there, 233 points. Doesn't mean too much at this point being fifth because, as I said, they've barely used any of their flags. So uh, still a long way to go. They've only six or, as I said, 65 flags in on their side and we've used almost double that amount. Or well, 35 on their side and we've used almost double that. No, it's close to triple that now. Um, but yeah, that's my war hits. I figure the one last thing that I will do, um, which is probably a little bit overdue for some of it is give some initial thoughts or at least a, a quick one on these heroes. So this is the new rock bands family, um, of heroes. So their family grants them 10, 15, 20, 25, and 35, or sorry, 30% 30 armor gained at the start of each wave. Um, doesn't really play much at all into raiding, which is a little bit sad because there's no waves in raiding. It does mean that they do have a bit of usability as a family, um, not really in events that won't help at all for events, but it will potentially help with, um, just normal map farming and such. So I don't know. I, I don't really rate that as a family bonus. Um, in the event stages, we get the usual thing where you get attack and defense bonus, but that is notably only during the rock band event. Um, that bottom part doesn't affect anything at all um, when you're not playing the rock band event. So um, odds as always are horrendous. It's only 1.2%. So it is a little bit above um, some of the other events. Um, and there are three five-star heroes. So it is about, it is a little bit better odds than some of the other ones, but it is still pretty atrocious. Like you're talking 0.4% um, for a specific five-star hero from the event, which is bad. <laughs> um, so of them, we end up, the breakdown is there's three five-star heroes, two, two, two four-stars and one three-star hero. So we'll start with the three-star because he's far and away the best hero in this portal. Um, so this is Pumpernickel. So Pumpernickel is the three-star red assault class hero, um, 62 speed, which is fast, which is actually very great. Um, it's three below what fast charge attacks are set up. So I think it's eight tiles to charge is his speed. Um, so that's very good to start with. Um, then has 225% damage to the target and nearby. So that's three enemies getting that amount of damage. This is where it gets hectic though, this bottom two dot points. So number one is that uh, all three or the three enemies that are hit get minus 48% defense against red for three turns. That is the same percentage and turns counter as um, Rudolph and Cutlass both have. So that's very strong, particularly on a three-star hero. Um, Rudolph and Cutlass are both notably slower than that. Um, and they're five stars and they're much harder to get a hold of. So that makes Umpernickel very, 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 very good um, because he's much more obtainable. And yeah, if you level him out, give him plus 20, you'll be able to smash 14-star war machines quite happily. Um, so yeah, well worth getting, well worth leveling probably two copies for tournaments and such. Um, it's also hectic because um, the stack gives uh, two 
stacks each time you fire the special skill. Um, a stack is an uncleansable effect. It's separate to other buffs, so it will stack with other, in this case, accuracy elements. So if you've got pump nickel um, or two pump nickel, and then you also want to use someone like, I don't know, maybe Blaze in the team, those two accuracy debuffs or ailments will stack with each other. Um, so the stacks, uncleansable, as I said, um, they're separate to everything else at this stage. Um, and so each turn, oh, I should also mention, they've added passives to the rock band heroes. So just to make them even more strong. So yeah, accuracy debuff coming in every turn and every time he fires a special skill. Very, very, very strong. Well worth leveling multiple copies of Pump and Nickel. The four stars are also pretty great. So we've got Giles, a four star purple. Um, he is an out and out support hero. Um, there's no other way of looking at him, um, particularly because he's support class. <laughs> um, his skill at average speed, so I think that's 10 tiles to charge. Uh, grants 39% defense and 39% attack to all allies, notably percent based, um, instantly putting him above pretty much every other attack and defense boosting hero available. Um, the stack then gives plus 2% charge generation per stack. So because this gives plus three, you get 6%. Um, and then every turn you're also gaining 2% charge generation as well. So um, that's also very strong. Plus 40% charge that is uncleansable is awesome. Um, and it's charge generation, sorry. So that's very, very, very good. Um, another hero well worth leveling multiple copies of um, for war purposes, particularly if you're playing against yellow tanks or even when you're not playing against yellow tanks, um, he's still a very good off-color support hero. Sideburns, the four-star blue. Um, interestingly, uh, Sideburn is a, well, We'll get into all that stuff in a second. War class hero, uh, sorry, war fighter class hero. Um, special skill, it is slow, which is unfortunate because all the other ones are quite a bit faster than him um, in the rock band family, but he's still quite manageable because he does give quite a bit of healing. Um, so he's got an instant heal of 20% health via the minions. So that comes out at being about 240 health um, instantly gained. Um, when the minion dies, this is where it gets a little bit awesome. They gain a plus 44% attack for three turns. Um, so again, percent base, so it's very strong. Um, but the caveat is that it comes after the minion dies. Um, then add to that, that all allies regenerate 20, uh, sorry, 228 HP over three turns. So that basically doubles the amount of healing, um, because of the minion as well. Um, and yeah, so this is the first blue healer in the four star arena. Uh, one of only, well, I mean, the, the, old, the other one is Bridget, but she does armor. Um, the other regenerating health hero is throttle. So it's fairly similar to that, except granting a minion with an instant heal as well. Does do a stack, which gives an, a plus 2% chance to resist status ailments for each stack. So plus eight. So you get plus 8%, sorry, sorry, plus 1% each stack um you also gain that in the passive effect plus one percent chance to resist every turn um probably the weakest of the stacks to be honest um it is only a chance to resist status ailments um which is not ideal because obviously rng can get stuck and it's not great so there is a chance as well that you can have maxed out so plus 30 percent chance to resist status ailments and never have them resist um as opposed to someone like Giselle who gives guaranteed resistance or Nima for yellow. So still worth doing um, if only for um, bloody battle tournaments um, because of that instant, the pseudo heal via the minions. So not great, but still pretty good all in all. Uh, so that's the three and four star heroes. We do have the three five star heroes um, being Zigzag. Uh, Undertaker and Roxy. We'll start with Roxy because she is the weakest of the three legendary heroes. Um, so Roxy grants a 485 heal uh, for all allies and cleanses and then grants um, a plus six stack with each stack granting plus 1% defense against special skills. Now, the reason I say she's easily the weakest is because, well, all in all, all of these effects are worse than counterparts. So um, the best one to compare her to, or the best two to compare Roxy to, is Jocosta and El Coyote. So in that, we've got a very old hero of the month and a vanilla hero. Now, all three of them are medic class. 
all three of them heal, all three of them cleanse, and all three of them have a secondary buff, all right? The healing on Roxy is worse than either Jocasta or El Coyote by a long way. It's like 200 HP less. So instantly she's on the back foot. Her charge speed is a little bit faster, but not noticeably so. It's only like one tile difference between the two, so it's not really any difference at all. The cleanse is the same on all three. Now, Joe then grants a, um, a charge generation, which is insane. It's very, very good. I love charge um, controlling special effects. So Joe is awesome from that regard. El Coyote grants an instant plus 48%. I think it is. Pretty sure it's 48%. Where's Coyote? I just want to double check that. Where's Coyote? Gonna be like the last one and I should have gone left rather than right. There he is. All right, yeah, so plus 48% defense against special skills. Comparably, I'm just gonna close that and go back in. Roxy, on the other hand, only gives plus 1%, maxing out at plus 35%. So 48 versus 35%. And Coyote gets that 48% instantly, whereas Roxy takes a lot of turns to build up to that 35%. So on the back foot there as well. You also have the fact to compare in that um, you've also got Jargle as a four-star red healer. A lot easier to obtain, a lot cheaper to max out, a lot cheaper to emblem, and grants effectively the same amount of healing. Um, so, for me, if you get Roxy, I'd just push her to 4-80, but I wouldn't be using 5-star mats on her. Um, I don't think she's really worth the repelling gear, to be honest. The other two 5-star heroes are both really great. Um, I'll start with Zigzag because he's slightly below Undertaker, but they're both really great. So Zigzag, support class, yellow hero, passive grants plus one uh, crit, 1% 1 crit stack. Um, so that's great. I love crit. So we're already off to a win. Charge speed's 50. So average on that one, I think it's 11 tiles to charge. Getting into his special skill, we got an instant charge gain of 20%. Love it. Free charge, just winning. 16% uh, dodge, which we all know is extremely broken in this game. Um, all, ally all enemies then get minus 28% charge generation. So not only are we granting free charge, we're also restricting the enemy's charge generation as well. And then we've got even more crit coming in. So it comes out at a maximum of plus 30% crit uh, with plus 5% crit granted every time the special skills cast. So also got fairly balanced stats, which is nice. Um, I really rate Zigzag. I'd love to, oh, I did get him and I will be pushing him into a support role. Um, there is a chance that he can actually function fairly well as a tank just because of the dodge and the free charge. Um, the charge helps your allies, the dodge helps your allies and the charge generation hurts your enemies. Um, yeah, he's not doing any damage or anything like that, but free charge, if you surround him with five, four other AOE hitters, means that you can go bang, 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 bang and kill the enemy really quickly. Um, so well worth leveling him. Undertaker is probably the best hero in this portal. Um, assault class, uh, passive and stacks relate to a 2% defense down for all enemies, which cannot be cleared. Getting into special, the reason why that is so great is really because of this second line here that the target gets minus 48% defense against purple for four turns. So this is our first four turn, um, EDD ailment. So yay for that one. Um, 48%, same as all of the other elemental defense down in Rudolph, Cutlass, Pump and Nickel, Marigold and the rest. Um, so consistent with that. But what's interesting is that this is the first hero that does both, um, giving both defense down and elemental defense down in the same one. So well worth leveling for that. Uh, I'm a little undecided if you've already got Marigold, whether it's worth leveling Undertaker as well, because there's not, like he is definitely better but it's worth that he's worth spending another six um, ghillie suits to get two heroes that do very similar things. Um, his damage is phenomenal, 333% at 750 attack and coming in at 60 charge speed as well, which is fast. So win, 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 win. Um, but yeah, well worth leveling if you get him. Um, if you've got Marigold already maxed out, um, I don't know, might be worth leveling him still, might not be. I'm undecided myself personally, but... Um, definitely worth it if you don't have Marigold, um, worth leveling him. 
And that's pretty much it. That's all of the new heroes into the game with some initial thoughts on them. Um, overall, they're all pretty great. The exception is probably Roxy. Um, she's, in my opinion, subpar. Um, and then Sideburn isn't great either, but he's still solid. Um, he has more uses, I would say, than Roxy. Um, more merit as a unique hero than Roxy does. Roxy is just too similar to other heroes and uh, lacking compared to those other heroes. So, yeah, that's um, that's the review, I guess. Um, oh, still getting attacked. Uh, that's probably all I've really got for this one. Um, I've got... A lot of stuff left in this war, um, and I'm sure everyone else has lots of war stuff to do as well. So I'm going to love yous and leave yous. Um, good luck with your own war hits and everything else. Also with the new event as well, if you are choosing to compete, good luck with that. Um, it is a new one, so we'll see how it all balances out in the end. Um, good luck, everyone. Stay safe and happy gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.